All right, send it. Welcome to the fine print, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Caleb Teske, and today I'm joined by Rob Hartzell, uh, Rob Skira from Brooklyn. What up, Rob? What's up, man? Thanks for having me. Happy to be Absolutely, here. Absolutely, man. Thanks for talking to me on the phone yesterday because I forgot to call you earlier. <laughs> Normally, <laughs> I do my intake calls about a week in advance, so I got some time to <laughs> forget about it and make it seem like it never happened. Yep. <laughs> Cool. Uh, before we dive into anything, would you do a five-minute life story for us? Yeah, sure. Um, born and raised in uh, the boonies in Vermont, uh, Washington, really small town. Um, yeah, on like what used to be a farm, real rural. Um, let's see, grew up, went to like a hippie Waldorf school that kind of like nurtured my creative side. Started writing around like end of middle school, beginning of high school. Um then went to U32, met some cool people there. We started kind of like rapping together, um, started like recording around the end of high school. And then um, since then been just kind of like, yeah, figuring it out by myself with, uh, with definitely plenty of help from uh, mentors in and out of the scene. Now, I believe you said um, you started writing and, and like rapping as, as a joke. Yeah, yeah. I would like make parodies of uh of songs and just kind of to make make my friends laugh. What kind and, of songs? Uh, <laughs> uh, I did like Kanye's early stuff, like uh Eight Ways and Heartbreak was like one of the first albums I knew. So I, I parodied like Amazing, Heartless, um, No Hands by like Walk a Flock of Flame, uh <laughs> Handlebars by the Flowbots. I think that was the first one I ever did. Um <laughs> But yeah, it, I, I I would write them from like the point of view of classmates. So like you say that there were like three features on the song, I would like take their persona and like convert it to some random classmate and then do it from their perspective. It's just kind of like learning how to structure a song and I would like pretty much follow the same rhyme scheme and structure and length of the song and just try to make it funny. And, uh, and then that, I guess, kind of taught me how to structure songs and just like rhyme. And then that, that's, bond into like writing my own stuff that's an interesting uh, sort of like mental exercise yeah i haven't done it since it was kind of just like the genesis and then i never really returned to it but oh we're gonna return to <laughs> yeah it's coming back <laughs> um it i believe you also told me maybe like one of your uh your best friends that you grew up with you you kind of started uh rapping with him yeah, yeah, my boy Connor, he uh Connor Cooley. Uh he uh he does a lot of my cover art and like visual stuff. Yeah, we would just like freestyle all the time every day in high school. And uh him and a couple other friends in high school was like that's how I first started like showing anybody uh my my stuff that was like actually about me. You know, for a long time it was just like a diary type thing where you don't show anyone. Um but yeah, <laughs> like showing friends kind of gave me confidence and like some of the upperclassmen um, actually kind of like messing with it gave me the confidence to be like, all right, maybe, maybe people will like this. Oh, you got a little props from the the kids above you in high yeah. school. Yeah. Hmm. But were I never you a really shy kid in high school. Um, it's weird. I was like a, I was like a class clown, like troublemaker in elementary school. And then like eighth grade, I got really fucking depressed. And then, like, entered high school, and I was, like, the new kid, like, a much bigger school. So I was definitely, like, shy, um, kind of, like, withdrawn in high school. Um, but, yeah, yeah, you know, I, I, I definitely, like, I was that kid who was, like, not really in any one group, but kind of, like, on good terms with everyone. So I kind of, like, knew, knew everyone. Hmm. I knew everyone, too. They just didn't hang out with me. <laughs> yeah exactly i never got invited to parties or anything but like people would like you know you know give me give me nods in the hallway and stuff like yeah that. right you come over and smoke a joint with me on the side of the party where i'm just standing by the fire by myself <laughs> <laughs> yeah look i was at hoping least it, at least you made it to the parties oh yeah yeah and then i didn't want to be there i, I never even there. knew they were happening until, <laughs> until that <laughs> <laughs> brutal <laughs> oh man i was hoping so you're out in Brooklyn now. I was hoping you sort of, I believe 18, maybe you said you started recording. Mm -hmm. And um, I was hoping maybe you'd kind of walk us up to that part and then the transition to New York and like what happened in between. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, I think I, I, I don't know. I cringe at pretty much everything in my in my past, like art related. But one thing I will pat myself on the back for is that I, I made a conscious decision to like write or like uh, hone my craft for like four plus years before recording and putting anything out. Um, you know, I see a lot of people like, and all the power to them. I honestly wish I started putting out music sooner to get feedback, and like, because I think I definitely leveled up exponentially once I started putting things out and learning how to record. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm glad that I didn't put anything out until I was at least like listenable, you know? So that that's kind of when I started that, like right around the and literally like going into the summer after uh, senior year where I was like, all right, if nobody, if everyone hates this, at least I won't have to see anybody again. So I just started putting shit out then. And um, yeah, like my friend Zach helped me. Uh, he helped me record my first ever song and like mix it. And then from there, I just like, figured it out um Did you, what'd you record on uh logic yeah i've always used logic all oh, right you're super young you are you guys already had that stuff <laughs> i was like man when yeah, i was, I, was like, like, boy, we, I don't know how we I do was that used, i was used to like garage band um because like i think garage band like came with with the macbook or something um and i took like one music tech class in high school and logic looks pretty much exactly like garage band so it was like the logical step to do ah. and um Ha. <laughs> and, uh, but yeah yeah so i mean it honestly for a long time i did not know the first thing about mixing like i was just leveling and like guessing at eqing and i thought that was mixing like i didn't even know what compression was um He's like that. the knobs yeah yeah zach uh like sky splitter he he mixed my first project thankfully um but then everything after that i um i kind of started to like try my hand at it definitely got some help from some other other mentors um this producer mentality and, and space cap that i work with and they taught me they gave me like the foundation of knowledge in um in mixing and then um yeah from there i just like have kind of opted to do it myself because i i find that it um it kind of like informs the recording process and it makes everything more like um i don't know it's just easier to execute ideas when you're like all right i'm gonna write it knowing how i'm gonna record it and i'm gonna record it knowing how i'm gonna mix it are you mixing all your own shit yeah really yeah dude i was just fucking banging some of your tunes here as a little warm-up yeah all right all right rob well not not all not always the beats because i usually uh i'm starting to produce myself more nowadays but uh are you making beats too the, starting to do but for the past like several years it's mostly been just like beats that at least that have like come sometimes i'll like buy the stems you know and like rearrange them and like maybe uh mix them differently or something but usually it's like the beats just like a wave file so i usually don't have to mix the beat it's just the vocals what um what kind of gear are you using for production still logic pretty simple yeah uh, i actually i produce on ableton um and i record and mix on logic what you got um, for controllers you got some midi controllers yeah i got yeah I got this little uh Mini, mini thing. This guy. Oh, word. Cool. Uh, sometimes I'll just like put things in uh, manually, you know, with like the piano roll. Um, but yeah, I just bought, I just leveled up my mic. I bought the, um, that like kind of typical podcast mic, the Shure SM7B. Um, yep. Definitely enjoying that one. I got JBL speakers um, and then just like a Behringer uh, interface for recording. That's Do you have it. chill neighbors? Um, my roommate is uh, a middle school teacher. Um, so he goes to bed at like 9 30, 10. So that was that was the source of some some tension for a while, but um now I've just kind of used that to motivate myself to like you know do some mixing earlier in the day. And get some nice headphones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, I forgot to mention that I have the like uh dt 770 or whatever the kind of typical like uh flat response um, i had to buy a really nice like i didn't have to but i was when i was living with my mom you know i had a pair of eight inch krks and that was nice when she wasn't home yeah. but as soon as she gets home it's like she'd be yelling she's like, nah, turn it down like so yeah i got a like a fucking 800 dollars pair of headphones dude it feels like a tempur-pedic bed on your ears <laughs> this is amazing you can stay in there forever and yeah the sound and they're fat so it's not like crushing your ear down which yeah. that would kill me man but yeah. nice. 
it was better than mixing in the monitors, I thought personally. That's interesting. I, I didn't have monitors till like a few projects ago. So like all the, like I'd say the first two thirds to first half of my stuff that I had mixed has been strictly headphones. And it wasn't even like mixing headphones at first. I had these like beats that were falling apart that I'd had since I was like 14, used them for all they were worth. And then, um, and then a lot, and then did like a couple projects, just headphones. Um, but then I think I agree sometimes like just for like details, I like headphones. Um, but I just really like mixing with monitors now. I feel like it, it makes every, it makes it the final product better for me. I do like to bang the monitors, but yeah. yeah. And, and when mom was gone, for sure, you just fucking turn the shit up. Yeah. She left for the weekend house party by myself. <laughs> so where were we headed? Somewhere. You was 18. You did the recording. You haven't gone. Oh, you went to UVM for a year, didn't you? For a year, yeah, just because everyone, like, by everyone, just basically also mom, you know, was like, uh, you need to go to college. And then um, the pandemic hit, I, like, right before it hit, actually, I was like, we were on spring break, and I was I was having uh, doubts um, and talking to my friend Connor, who we pretty much have had the same exact trajectory of, like, went to high school together, graduated, one gap year, one year at UVM, dropped out together, and then lived together for a year. Um, and we were just talking and like, just really not feeling it and basically making the, like coming to that decision of like, this is not, this is not it. And then the pandemic happened and um, that just made the decision easier. We're like, yeah, no way. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't regret that year. Definitely like met a lot of, a lot of cool people. Yeah. You said you mentioned a, a bunch of guys. I don't know if you want to shout any of those dudes out, but I feel like you just hollered at a couple of them last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of people in the Burlington scene. Uh, Eva Rawlings, David Chief, Ravansi, Zesty, uh, Asa Mack. Yeah. Oh, Asa Mack. Oh, I see some of his stuff. He's killer. Yeah, yeah. I, I never met that guy. Yeah. But yeah. once in a while, Justin will post a single up there and fucking – Justin's a big fan. I'm like, all right, I'll listen to anything Justin posts. Yeah, he's a beast, and he's DJing now too. Oh, sick. So you and this other guy, Ravan or what? Riven? Ravan, Ravan. Ravan. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I was just yeah. ripping through your album before this and looking for yeah. guest star uh, shoutouts. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. <clears throat> well, let's see. That's the Bowling review. That's gonna wait till later. My notes was a little sloppy. Mm. That's all right. Yeah. Oh, there was a show. You said I wanted to talk to you about trying to put on shows because we were sort of chatting about the challenges of you know, selling tickets or getting people in one place, man. Um, and, yeah. and you told me about kind of a rough one that you had there, like a nice learning experience, which I've fucking, yep. Yeah. I was curious if you would mind telling us about that, man. Wait, once, once, uh, I'm so sorry. Just give me like, take it, buddy. I'll take a rip of this. Oh, I got some, uh, well, he's gone. We've got some, what do we got? Green vinyl from Ethan at Tilia Hills. Okay, sorry, sorry. Um, Very on, there. That was a good plug for him. Yeah, yeah. Um, the question was, sorry. Oh, shows, hosting shows. The Thank you, God, because I fucking lost out there for a second. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. Uh, yeah, sorry for the distraction. No, um, you're good. <laughs> um, so the question was, uh, like, the challenges of hosting shows? or Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, well, it, I guess it depends where the show is, you know. Yeah. Um, if you're if you're doing it i guess at like a venue the challenge is at least in in my like where i'm at generation wise like uh you know if it's like at a bar or a place that serves drinks then you're like losing potentially like a third of your uh people you know for like young 20 somethings or like college kids you're losing everyone below 21 um so that that can just make it harder to to fill out the venue um and then if you're doing it like uh, BYOB, um, then it's just like harder to monitor that, you know, and there's a whole liability thing that comes along with that with like mixed stage groups and people drinking. Um, and then if you're doing it just like at your own space with no venue, then then it can be like, do you need a permit? Um, do you, you know, are you going to risk it without a permit? Like, are you going to get a noise complaint? Um, all that type of thing. So it just depends on uh, what kind of show you're hosting, but 
yeah i mean selling tickets uh can be can be easy but there, but then there's usually some trade-off you know yeah you said maybe so, we were talking about these online vendors that allow you to sell online and it sounded like you yeah, know you, exactly. you plug in a ticket price and then all <laughs> when the it hits the end user it's like taxed yeah that's that's another good point like uh doing it through a um an online site they're going to take their cut and then there's also going to be tax um and like doing a show i've done some shows here through um through like i don't even know what you would call them just like uh i guess their whole business is like putting on shows so then they take like you know half of your ticket sales but in, in return you get like promotion you know in the venue and you don't have to pay any of the you know the venue or any of that shit you just have to sell your tickets but you just make less off of the tickets so yeah, that's what you said it's like a 50 50 split you get to keep half and they and the promoters or whatever keep half yeah 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 i've never done one like that yeah um i've honestly found those to be the most profitable just because like even though you're you're getting a chunk of your profits taken you're uh you don't have to pay anything uh to put on the show you're just selling your own tickets and showing up and doing your set um so i honestly those are less stressful for me what if you don't sell any tickets can you still show up and get zero dollars and do a set <laughs> yeah you can still show up they just won't ask you back they have like okay. ticket, ticket quotas you know that's yeah, mr zero <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay yeah and yeah no it was whack actually they tried to like um the first show i did they like tried to say that i didn't hit the quota and like demote me to like a a lower uh qual like i don't know they want to be private they're like they're like you can do another show but it would have to be like an acoustic place i'm like i'm i'm a rapper but and then i was like but i knew like i knew personally that like way more people showed up than they said so i'm like can you check the tickets again and then like oh yeah sorry our mistake you actually did hit the quota so i also don't I don't really not to like throw shade. There's a lot of hardworking like door people and stuff, but a lot of door people don't don't do a good job and they don't they don't um like get everyone who actually comes in or like they don't get the proper tally. So people sneaking in. Yeah. Can't have that. No. We need Scotty Raymond at the door. Yep. <laughs> Give him the business. <laughs> Yo, you said I think you said once too you had to cancel one of these and refund a bunch of people through the the online service yeah 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 the first show i ever tried to put on myself was uh last year um and yeah once you know it like i went one and a half or two years without getting covid and then first time ever getting covid when the back when the quarantine was still 10 days i got it like a week before the show so i was like it was this whole thing of like it was my show that i was headlining i'm like does the show go on without me like uh do i fucking zoom myself in there like <laughs> Do I feel like that would probably be the wackest thing ever or do I like just like postpone this and make it like right before Christmas when no one can come and then also a bunch of people planned around this first day and now there's a blizzard on the second day so wow just that's like, it sounds like a comedy of error or like a lemony snicket is what I was yeah like. yeah <laughs> it, was, it was nightmarish I've done that too. Yeah. I had a call. I had a, I did a show in Lindenville at Fat Cats. Like we did a comedy show. It was fucking 25 below, dude. I told you I got a habit for putting on shows in the worst weather. It's like, you know, we still got fucking 35, 40 people to come out though. And yeah. yeah. It was decent. That's all, the people are into it. That's all you need, really. I was amazed. I was like, damn, we got 40 people out in the kingdom in the middle of nowhere. Like, hey. And it's yeah. freezing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. What uh okay, so we we off to Brooklyn. I know you mm -hmm. said the first thing I remember was party on the rooftop. Yeah. That that was pretty recent. Um yeah, I that was kind of like yeah, an undertaking that that me and like somebody else who lived in the building, we only we only really uh took that risk, I guess, after like living here for a while and kind of like feeling it out. So yeah, I've been here for like 10 months, something like that. And we did that a couple months ago. Eight months. That's when it's time for a roof party. I guess. Well, I, I haven't actually lived here the whole time. Um, and I've only lived here with him. We only had lived together like two or three months. So I guess it was pretty like soon after meeting each other. Just try to see what he's about. Like, listen, this is happening. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> see how he feels about it. Yeah. 
How, how did he feel about it? Was, did he come up and dance? No, well, it was his, it was his idea actually to oh. like throw throw a show, and then we were like thinking about where we could do it, and um, yeah, I don't know, we came up with the roof, um, you know, like Beatles style. Rooftop. How do you get up there? Is there like a fire escape, or you got a ladder in the house? Or oh, what? The, the the stairs just go up there, and you just open the door. Um, so yeah, it was cool. Um, and what you said, you could just see out into the city. Yeah, yeah, we got a pretty decent view, um, like the skyline. Um, yeah, decent, like plenty of space. Uh, definitely places where people could fall off and people were being stupid. Um, so that was definitely, uh, that had me stressed out. But um, how, how high up are you? Uh, it would be like five stories. So onto pavement is Dead. probably dead. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay and of course people are like jumping over the fucking gap on the roof and oh. we tried to like we tried to like rope it off so to be like don't go here but of course people people see a rope and they're like i'm going yeah. uh who so let me ask you who was performing yeah so um it was me and then um so the guy I threw it with he's like a dj so he did a set to like close out the night i did a set um our other friend who's like roommates with the DJ, um, he did like some slam poetry type stuff. Um, we, I got a couple other people um, fr- that I had met at like other shows um, to just do their thing. One guy was like a kind of like a fusion R&B rap indie type person. One person was just like playing the guitar singing. So we had a kind of an eclectic mix. What about that saxophone kid? Yeah, he actually played with me. Um, yeah, he's like he just lives right around the corner. So uh, yeah, he's done the last couple of shows with me. Sick, dude. How how many people do you have up there? Like fifty, probably. Um, yeah, to the point where it was like almost too many. Like the, the whole building was shaking and the the ceiling was like it felt like it was gonna cave in. Is that the roof right over you? Yeah, we're on the fourth floor, so right above us. Hmm. yeah so my my roommate were a good sport wait what's is it like brick is it wood why is it is it just an old roof i mean it's i think it's like strong enough it just yeah. like you know 50 people jumping up and down okay. is like okay so yeah. you had it hopping up there yeah it, it definitely was a success um a lot of people like again like uh and this was honestly on us because we it was just like the three of us me the dj and the poetry fella like kind of uh running everything from security to like uh the door to like promo and all that so like we were all doing a million things at once so we were say that's super, not enough people <laughs> no we weren't suit well we didn't have the budget to pay anyone else but then uh, like kind of ironically as a result we ended up like losing uh more money because um we like weren't able to like man the door super consistently and you know a lot of people were like sneaking in so it is we're all off the roof yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah so i'm a i'm a little i'm a little burnt out from shows just like the promo and the stress and like all that and the money um so i'm taking a little break but yeah you got a side hustle out there or a, a job or whatever yeah, I so I just got a job yesterday actually as a as a part-time engineer at a studio. Um and yeah, I've been like I've been shooting videos for people. Uh, I do like commission songs for people especially around the holidays. Um Oh, but, like, I saw and, that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um I, like make, I like that. Yeah, it's like it's kind of I feel like it's it could be damaging to whatever semblance of street cred that I have, but it also uh it you know it's it's a it's a fun thing to make some money off uh, what I like doing. Right. Well, it brought me back to that story you told at the beginning in school, where you were sort of like writing in a style of different people or whatever you were saying, like a nice like crack, like a mental exercise kind of just like Definitely. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's cool. Um, yeah, and I bet would. I bet you could whack them out pretty quick. I bet you could like, I bet you could spit bars out. Yeah. Um. It can. It's weird. It can go either way. Like. Um the 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 fact that people give me like all right I want you to say this about um the person that it's for you know this 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 that makes it so I'd like I have the end in sight from the start and then I know when I'm there and it's like just like checking things off a box trying to like get everything in there and it's just more of like a puzzle um whereas like if I'm just writing a verse it's kind of like I don't know where this is going um but yeah it also can be hard if it's like oh I can't figure out how to 
how to fit this in there. And it's like, but I have to fit this in there. It's like, I, I can't just take another direction because God it's paid like, me to it fit needs it to be a Sorry, yeah. let's go. But, you know, it's good. Um, but yeah, yeah. So it's definitely, I try to take my time with them. You know, I don't, I don't want to like uh, make them cookie cutter. I try to make them all unique, you know, and, and do a good job with them. Haven't gotten any bad reviews yet. So hopefully doing a decent job. How much you charge for one of those joints? Man, it depends. I try to like, I've, I've, I've been having like ethical dilemmas about this. Lately oh, I don't want to put you on like, the spot. I don't want to. Yeah. Well, all I'll say is this, like, uh, last year I was just like charging like flat rates and, um, you know, trying to make it accessible to like people my age. Um, and, but then like older people, like, you know, like middle-aged middle-class people would be like, uh, wow, you're way undercharging yourself for this. And I'm like, you know what, maybe you're right. Like I, I am only giving myself like minimum wage for this for like how much time it takes. So I don't know. I've tried to do kind of like a sliding scale. Um, and that, I don't know, at first that feels like more unfair to be doing that, but I, I hope it's like more ethical to be, or more uh, equitable or whatever to like, you know, um, try to not under for the sliding scale. Not sell myself short when there's like someone like wants to pay more and they can, but also try to like keep it, keep like a cheapo, option for like people my age who like so it's like they still can access the uh yeah. the thing i'm doing and those guys so, those guys who told you that um you should charge more did they ever fucking give you money yeah yeah some of them would like okay cool like did they give you more <laughs> you yeah yeah deserve, like a tip <laughs> but sometimes sometimes people would just be like yeah you deserve more and then just leave it at that but normally yeah people will put their money where their mouth is yeah i prefer if you're going to tell me i deserve more that you just give it to me <laughs> yeah, yeah. i appreciate i agree <laughs> do you have yeah. more because i could use more yeah yeah i am pretty good at this yeah but, <laughs> yeah yeah i've been thinking about making it a more serious thing like an llc or something like that huh. um, what were you doing you were doing i feel like you did like some graduation tunes and maybe like some valentine's yeah, I, they were like it was either feast or famine like the christmas one definitely went off the first time because it was like a novel idea and definitely and this year like the christmas thing went well too um but uh and then the mother's day one worked out well um but then yeah i tried to do like a new year's resolution one that was a dud uh, like one we got like one commission for that try to do a, a a valentine's verse type thing um zero commissions um and then the graduation one, zero commission. So I think I'm just going to stick to like doing the promo for like the holidays and like Mother's Day, maybe Father's Day. And then um, and then just kind of make it known that like like I've, I've done some for like weddings. I did one for um, like a like a uh, student government campaign, like made a campaign song for them. So I just trying to make it known that like I'll do this for a birthday for like someone having a baby, like whatever it is. Year you round, know. You know? yeah <laughs> whatever doc <laughs> double for the funeral <laughs> that would be lit yeah. do the moms love you you said mother's day yeah. <laughs> play this at my funeral <laughs> I'll, yeah. I'll get it on loop dude i'll have kyle yeah. chop it up no that would be that would be wild i wow hmm. i kind of hope that never happens but i also hope it does i could pull that off yeah, if you ever, if you ever, uh, yeah, if you ever need a commission at a funeral, Bob, I'm the guy. <laughs> uh, well, since I mentioned Kyle, dude, what's up? You said you, I believe you said you did a bunch of shows with Kyle, and and that he was good at being a DJ. <laughs> yes, you, you can quote you can quote me, Kyle Kyle Anger, DJ Kanganate is good at being a DJ. Yeah, mm -hmm. um, yeah, he's he's the best around. Um, he's yeah, we, I feel like we've done a ton of shows over the years um just it seems like any show in like central vermont or burlington and it's like if i had to guess showing up like he's gonna be the dj um and i'm always grateful when he is because it's just like yeah we've done enough together now where he like kind of knows the set i mean i try to make the set different every time but he like you know he knows what i like in terms of like adding some scratches and he's got the the one thing the one thing that i'll say about kyle is yeah yeah I, give us some I, I appreciate this though. I appreciate it, but it just uh, sometimes it, it like it keeps me on my toes. Is he is the type of DJ who like 
he just keeps it going like as soon as i finish a song that was like a mouthful he'll just like start the next one and i'm like dude like i needed to drink some water but he'll just like constantly because he's always trying to like be on time which is just definitely like the mark of a professional and like trying to get everyone their time but i'm like dude sometimes you gotta give me a second to breathe but uh he's a he's a fucking professional you don't uh, miss a beat yeah, yeah he doesn't <laughs> Yeah, there's not a, lot, not a lot of people who can uh, who can like scratch like him and uh, who just know know how to run a show like him. And what like what's the first show you did with him? What would you say? How long ago? Oh man, um, well I started I started performing in like 2018. Um, it might have even been the first show. Like the first show I ever did was um, was like with Boom Slang and uh, Maiden Voyage. And um, oh, geez, dude, coming out swinging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, Dustin and Johnny, rest in peace, were uh, definitely like instrumental in uh, in uh, putting me on, you know, and like mentors to me. Um, yeah, so they they had me open for them, and that was cool. Like that's how I met, uh, you know, Jar and Tees and, and Nate. Um, but yeah, I feel like Kyle might. No, I think I think I think Dustin just uh, said one, just like DJ that kind of just like put on the tracks. But probably one of those early shows at like Sweet Melissa's back when it was that and or like Positive Pie, I feel like um, with like lyric or like cultural chemistry, maybe, maybe Kyle. No, Zach would have been DJing those. I don't know. It was, it was one of those early ones that, that Kyle did. I remember kicking maybe a freestyle with. I, I did maybe a freestyle with. Oh, no, sorry. No, no. Go ahead. I did a freestyle with lyric there and in, in, way back when I used to rhyme a little and uh, they were at Positive Pie. Yep, um, yep. Yeah, yeah, that was super fun. That was like maybe the first time I met those guys, the Aztecs guys, when they were yeah. still rocking. They're super dope. Yeah, mm. they're just wild. Yeah, legends. Yeah, legendary. Um, I want to roll through. You did. You said Ethan and Jar is living out there in Brooklyn. I feel like yeah, you said yeah. you run into them maybe sometimes. I, I wish Tease was. We're all like trying to convince him to move, but he doesn't want to. But um. <laughs> um yeah they're all great guys and like super fucking talented man um yeah i'm just like i'm bummed that they're in different places now so like the maiden voyage thing is harder um but they're all like still doing their solo thing and um yeah and they had a, a little like reunion show which was awesome uh like over the summer um in vermont it was like the first time they played together in a few years and that was super fun like i was always just such a fan of them and like uh just definitely look up looked up to them when i was first like going to shows um like yeah before i even was doing any shows i was like taking notes from them but yeah so now it's cool because um yeah ethan and jarv live out like a, a mile and a half away from me so i've been seeing them at shows and hanging out a little bit starting to um make some music um yeah yeah Talented. it's on you tease i wish tease would come out yo he's a great kid i like that kid man i like his it's just so it's just a totally unique style. It's like, yeah, I don't know if sing, they they sing to me or style. what? Yeah, yeah. T has got that that sweet croon. I love it. Mm. You got a little bit of that yourself. You got like Yeah. Like mm. it, you you use these cadences sort of that like I don't know. I feel like a lot of rap is very formulaic now and it's not super interesting to my brain. Like I I just get bored of it really quick. And you, you're you always like mixing it up and using, like you said, it's kind of like a puzzle, you know? And like, I've read some verses, you know? I know you like, you get this bit here and then you get this bit here and you work around like, yeah, yeah. And you got a very interesting way of, of chopping it up that my brain seems to really enjoy. I appreciate that a lot, man. Mm. I, I feel like I still have a lot of work to do in the like cadence department. Um, I've, And it's been something I've been like working on lately. Um. Cause yeah, I feel like when I'm in the melodic bag, I feel like I can definitely like keep it interesting to the listener like that. But when I'm just like spitting, I feel like I have a tendency to kind of go, oh, not, I don't want to say monotone, but like a little like darker with the cadence and just like, I don't know, um, kind of just like spit in bars at a very kind of like, uh, I don't know, just like, like level, uh, not super, not super dynamic, like, um, Cause that's just kind of how I am. Like, that's my personality. It's like, takes a lot to get me like riled up. So I, uh, but I've been trying to like, I've been trying, I've been getting this feedback and, and trying to apply it of just like getting more comfortable on the mic and just like, ex and experimenting and like 
moving my voice around and just like being more playful, you know, even when I'm just like rapping. Hmm. Um, I believe, I believe that we got a, a Bowen quote here. Uh, he's also forging his own vo uh, voice into a style that's much more than the sum of his influences matured beyond his years. <laughs> How do you that's feel about that? Man, uh, that's like my favorite compliment to get. Um, cause I, you know, unfortunately there is like, uh, there's always the, um, I always like lament this to like other art friends. Like there's like uh, a time window, especially like on hip hop, I'm, or especially like uh, on being like a rapper. Um, you know, I feel like, you know, it's something I want to do for my whole life, but it, it does feel like you better fucking like have something to show for yourself by the time you're like 30, 35, or it's like that, that, uh, that door is closing, you know? Um, so it's all it always hypes me up uh when people are like uh you know yesterday when we talked you're like oh you're younger than i thought or you know people are like oh wow he's like beyond his ears you're like you're only you're only 23 you're only 20 so um yeah it's cool look at that it's like high school you're still impressing the older class <laughs> yeah i love it and i still and i part of it's like this uh this complex of like oh, i still feel like i haven't done enough yet comparing myself to people like oh, i should be here by now um, which is not healthy, but um, yeah, I'm I'm always grateful to get that that compliment. <laughs> like the window's closing. I'm 23, and if I don't get this done by the time <laughs> I'm 35, like that's 12 years, dude. You got a minute? <laughs> yeah, but time goes fast. It does, you know. And boy, when you're young, that's the time to hit it. Especially like, you know, I wish I would have started doing. This. <laughs> like I wish I would have had something figured out when I was younger that I could have focused on and put my energy into instead of just like, you know, drinking and being an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. All right. We're going to run through some of your album here. I was Let's hoping, uh, tell me about a uh, pilot and Rivon C here. Um, yeah, yeah, that was uh, the start. It says uh, you start off the EP with two of the best rap songs out of Vermont this year. Yeah, high praise um yeah i think so i think ravon recently rebranded as just ravon like he dropped the c but yeah so um yeah um the so you wanted to know about just pilot or yeah just tell me tell me a little bit about, about making the album and i wanted yeah. to ask about your friends here and maybe who did the beats yeah yeah um so yeah the album had been in the works for a while um honestly I meant to finish it like last year and then it just kind of like you know shit got in the way I started focusing on other things singles and videos um so it kind of got pushed back um some months but uh yeah you know it's it's like part of the series I'm doing the element series um earth air water fire um so the earth one I did uh that dropped in like spring of uh 2021 and so this is like the next one um so now I'm working on like the water one that'll be the next one but yeah, the air one was uh, the second, uh, second volume, a um, little longer, uh, definitely tried to, you know, work in uh, sonically, like uh, this feeling of air, you know, with how I mixed it. And you did uh, it. I think that's, I think, thank you, bro. And I think that's why it took me a long time because like, uh, it's always a moving target for me, like with mixing on the, like, if I, if I don't buckle down and just let go of my perfectionism and just finish it it's going to be like oh well now it's three months later and i'm like better at mixing now so i can like, like i want to make this better now and then it just keeps you know i just beat it to death but um yeah part it's it's ironic i, I always find that like there's, there's this beautiful like uh uh entanglement of like uh the concept of the project and the process of the project and like one of the main concepts of like air and everything associated with it is like detachment and like letting go you know um and like non uh yeah just letting go um like into the void you know be nothingness basically um and so part of like letting go is you know letting go of of the need for it to be per perfect you know um so that kind of that theme kind of mirrored uh what i needed to uh it's weird it's it's really cool i i treat these the project like especially the element ones most projects i do are conceptual but i treat them kind of like uh like chapters in my life where i'm kind of like okay this is the this is the chapter in my life where i'm gonna like 
learn to like let things go like in my everyday life and also I'm going to try to let go some of the uh the need for perfection in the music itself um so that's kind of what that process was and then yeah I got a bunch of features on that one I think like five out of the seven songs had features um they're all people like I I've known like done shows with um or just knew personally as friends and they all killed it like they all really hit the hit the theme on the head yeah, this track with Eva Rawlings too, the Echo. Yeah, she fucking killed that, man. Killer. Wow. Yeah. What about the videos for these tracks? Who's doing the videos, man? Um, normally I just get like a friend to film it and then I edit I edit it. Um and then for the ones like for the ones that's just me, like the uh the static one, I just felt I did that one myself, like just shot it myself, edited it. Um yeah, like super super rough diy setups like i saw you trying to work out like yeah dude i i like it you're working with what you got and you know um yes you gotta do that sometimes i'm on a fucking laptop sitting on cardboard boxes like you know you get it done the the static one i literally uh laid down like 12 trash bags over like the like edge of our garage uh to like just have like a nice black background um it wasn't really even a nice background but just have a black background and then I taped my phone to the gutter above above the uh, ground just to get like an aerial shot and just like and that's how I shot like uh that one soothsaying and sometimes from like last year um, I just like set the phone up like tried to focus in in the middle hope that I'm like where I think I am in the shot and then do like half an hour of of uh takes and then just look at the video and then hope that hope that i got it you know <laughs> how long does it take you to edit something like that together um man oh like hours wise probably it's hard to even think i could it would usually take like a week or a couple weeks uh so hours wise probably like 10 hours maybe something like that 10 15 cut up like a half hour chunk or, or one video yeah just I mean, you know, color grading it, uh, cut, finding the right takes out of like half an hour where I went through the song like six times and like, uh, um, yeah. And then if I add captions, that takes a while. Um, but I, I've definitely like story in my life with like mixing and then videos as doing things the absolute like most tedious backwards way <laughs> and just like getting to the point where it's it's so broken that I can't fix it because I'm like, like this is the way I know to do it. And it's just going to take more time to learn to do it a different way. But now, now that I'm like shooting videos for other people, I'm like trying to like, I got like the free version of like DaVinci Resolve and I'm trying to learn how to do effects and stuff and just like level up my game a little bit. I would like to learn it. some of that, you know, because like I'd like to do more on site interviews. And I feel like if I could figure out how to work the cameras, I could do it myself, you know, and then edit it later. Like, Cause the, we did one live and the camera guy, he was just standing there the whole time. Like we needed him to set that shit up. Cause I don't know what I'm doing, but yeah. you know, I feel like that's one of those things that could help me level up too with some, some video editing. But that, again, like you're saying, like that's a whole other can of worms. Like I told you, like I spent like five years figuring out how to make half decent beat. And then like mm-hmm. another fucking three or four years trying to figure out how to make it sound good in a mix. It's just like, there's so many cans of worms out here. It feels overwhelming, like to get into any one of them. Right. Right. For me. Yeah. That's the blessing and the curse of like, of art and just like hip hop is like, there's so many different uh, roles and lanes. So it's like so many people can be involved, but if you're like trying to, you know, if you're on a budget trying to do it yourself, like we are like it, it's tricky. Um, Cause like you got to cut out some of those middlemen, but then that also takes a lot of time and energy and investing in yourself to like learn those things. And at a certain point you do want to like, just like delegate those things to other people, but. Absolutely. Pretty- That's one of those things for sure. But yo, I got the same kind of complex as you. Like when I was making beats, like it was never perfect and it would fucking drive me nuts, dude. Like, or I would have one sample that was like, it had a little clip in it. Like I didn't, trim the edge right when i cut it up or something or you know it was always just and i would get stuck in these modes where like because i wasn't that good at mixing like i figured out how to make a decent beat but i wasn't that good at mixing and so i just was getting frustrated with myself because i couldn't learn fast enough and then i got friends that are like so good at this and it's like i don't i just want to give it to that guy but i also feel like i want to learn this because i 
you know, I feel like I could figure it out. It's just, it's so much yeah. to deal with really. It is. Yeah. And yeah, it's just a balance for me of uh, figuring out uh, how much of this do I want to like, is it a more worthwhile investment to just like do it myself to not have to pay anyone? Or is that going to take so much time that like, I should just pay someone to do it? You know, like how much do I want to be a generalist and like be able to combine these, like these fields of knowledge or how much do I want to like specialize in certain things, you know? And I'm at that point now where I'm like, I, you know, I know how to mix, like I know how to produce, I know how to write, I know how to shoot videos, edit videos, but it's, I know how to promote myself, but it's like, how many of those things, what's actually most important to me? What do I want to be? I'm good at all those things now. What do I want to be great at? You know? That's a, that's a well stated, man. Thanks. Uh, I mean, I'm, I don't feel like I'm probably good at a ton of things, but I'm, I find myself in that same kind of mind state. And it's like, all right, I just want to be focusing on doing interviews, man. I like, that's what I like doing. That's what I'm good at. I don't want to have to sit here and backfill fucking YouTube videos for an hour after, you know, I want to go get yeah. hot. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it seems like, I, I, I really respect how like you keep the, the videos organic, right? Like you don't really do any editing. It's just like the whole conversation, like, and I think that's the way to do it with like podcasts or interviews or just like people appreciate the fact that it like they can tell there's no you're not like hiding anything. You're not taking anything out. I, 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 I edited two seconds out of well, I edited one second out of one interview because somebody both times it was somebody said a name of of a uh, person that um did not want to be mentioned. So, well, when it's some, that, yeah, when it's something like that, it, like I, I respect people's privacy and some, you know. One of them, you know, could have potentially lost her job. So, um, oh, we're gonna, yeah, we're not going to fucking kill anyone's job here. I'll take a second out for you. No, that's that's. And I put point. it in the description. I say, yeah, we took a second out uh, to protect people's anonymity. Yeah, no, that that is, I think, a responsibility. Um, yeah. But like, no, I also I think up. in general, you, you you I think you you own this uh, and embody this responsibility to like give the unfiltered truth, which in general is. A whole, whole unedited thing so that's I to. You do. if i stop doing that people will think something's up yeah exactly that's my whole shtick yeah but and that's also what i've tried to embrace that with like uh with like diy stuff you know like videos like a lot of times i'll like with the videos i shoot myself i'll like fucking like include a clip of me like setting up the camera and just be like let me just like uh let me just highlight the fact like the behind the scenes part of this or the fact that it's so like raw and DIY so that it doesn't seem like I'm like trying to pretend it's not, you know, we did a little B roll footage. We did the onsite interview. We rolled up to John Rogers farm and my buddy had the drone. We got a nice drone shot. And then I actually did some voiceover. I was just oh, like, no. Oh boy, please don't fuck this up. You know, like just joking around. I, was <laughs> like, I hope someone has beers in here. I forgot to bring beers. Like, and we walked through his barn. We got a nice shot walking through the barn. And you got some, yeah, it was cool, you know. And it was like, and I did the, I actually narrated it at home after, um, and just in one take. He was like, "You want to do some voiceover?" I was like, "Yeah, we're just gonna do one because I got to get out of here." And did yeah. it in one take and fucking bounced. <laughs> That's cool, dude. Yeah, you probably. Like, hmm? You got a drone and you're doing like. Oh, what? that's that's my homie. I'm. He's a professional cameraman. I met him at Nikan. He's a brand ambassador for Panasonic, Ben Grunum. Um, oh. And he offered to do one for free for me because um, he's a nice guy. He also nice. said, I think I could maybe borrow his camera to go do some other ones because he's a nice guy. And he's got some really nice gear up there. Like they fly him around the world to go do like they flew him to Switzerland to take like a fucking 10 or 15 minute video of the mountains. And, and he just, yes, Ben, my okay. man, what a great gig. Um, I hope we could do some more of that because that's really what I want to be doing. I like to see the look on people's faces when I ask them questions, like yeah. in person. I'm in the hot seat. <laughs> Let's see, boy. I'm not getting through this as fast as I thought. We're gonna, we're gonna. Let's go, let's go. Tell me, <laughs> open the window. Open the window. Tell me about Junie the Wiccan. Oh, love that guy. Um, yeah, uh, met him through putting on that show I mentioned last year. Uh, that's where I met him and Charlie Main. I'm um, just like looking for people to put on the show. They were both dope, and I put them on the show, and uh, then like kind of have ever since have been like uh, working with them and just like forming friendships. And uh, yeah, Junie's awesome. Uh, we just linked up that day. I shot a video for him. Yeah, where'd you uh, film that? Song. 
um, at the Hubbard Tower in uh, Hubbard Park in Montpelier. Um, oh, that's Montpelier? So just, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it's like the forested part of it. Um, but yeah, his little brother Jojo shot that, like I said, you know, just getting a friend to shoot it. And then I edited it and uh, yeah, I shot a video for him that day and bada bing, bada boom. Who did that beat? I did. I actually produced that one. Hmm. Uh, Who was the old guy on the tower? <laughs> that's Willie Nelson. No, uh, that's uh, that was just a guy. He just showed up. Um, that's what you know, I thought. I was like, I bet. we he literally came in just like mid take, and and I would just motion to him like while wow, we're you know doing a doing a take of it. I'm just like, you want to get in here? And then you know we finished the take, and I'm like, you know, you want to like, is it you cool to be in the video? So yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. He looked like he was having a good time. He was a good sport, huh? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He was there for it. He looked like he was smoking a big joint in the woods or some shit. <laughs> uh, Probably. Hell yeah. Montpelier, old hippie guy. Yeah. How do you feel and, about this? Yeah, my guy. I just got to shout out my guy, Wack Jones. He played the guitar on that, on that beat. Wow. So you recording live instruments on your beats? Yeah, yeah, I had him. I actually had like a sample that I'm like, I'm paranoid to like use samples. I'm like from a different era, you know, so like uh, I like samples that I can't clear. So I uh, I had him um, just like uh, kind of play similar chords um, on the guitar. And then, you know, he sent me some acoustics, some electric and the bass and everything. And then I just, you know, I like rearranged the drums around that. Oh, he sent you um, just some stems of him playing it, and then oh, that's cool. Yeah, mixed it and arranged it, and you know, did the beat and everything. Dude, that was all right, dope, dude. And dude, some of these beats you use, like I like the sort of um, minimalistic aspects to some of them. Like, there's not, you know, there's nothing it, like doesn't leave a lot of room to hide. You got to be good at what you're doing, and you know, um, although that Echo song, it sounded like that one was maybe like, or one of them was like super chill at the beginning and then just bang into like, going on. yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I do like that minimalistic feel though. It's really good. I think for your style of, of rap, dude, it's, you really work that shit well, you know, um, some people I don't think can pull those beats off. Uh, we won't name names. No, <laughs> it's me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate yeah, man, you got um, you got anything? Oh yeah, you you so you came up for the um the show that we put on at the uh, Tacos and Taps in Morrisville with Big Homie yeah. West. How'd that go? Yeah. Super fun, man. A um, lot of talent out there. There were probably like 20, 30 people who uh, did did their song, really? um, and then by the end it was like uh you know like by crowd applause, which is always tricky to judge. Um, but yeah, um, definitely some some fierce competition out there. And yeah, that was good. It, it ended up me being like kind of like a tie between me and this uh, this uh, artist Afro Afro Bella, and um, yeah, and then you know it was going back and forth like crowd applause, and uh, and then we were kind of looking at each other. We we're like, should we just like battle or something? Split it? And then we we're like, oh. no, no. Well, <laughs> they were thinking that, but then I was like, no, should we just battle? Um, and uh, and then we you know we turned to the crowd. And I'm like, you guys want to see us battle? And they're like, yeah. Yeah, you know, so obviously. We did a, rap battle yeah and you lost i guess so yeah. no, just, <laughs> no no no, I no you, you, what you won 100 bucks yeah it yeah. sounds like um there was plenty of herbs to go around yeah fuck yeah yes. hell yeah that was super cool man like where where you see that like rap contest with like cash prizes like yeah awesome. no that was sick man thank you for helping to put that on yeah dude thank west for being a good shit if yeah, he was a Wes, dick, I never would have done that for him. <laughs> uh, Wes, is, yeah. Wes is indeed the big homie. Oh, he is, man. And you know, you know, like people, the crowds love him, man. Like he's got a, just good energy. He's especially around here, man. Like Lamoille County, he's got a mad love for Wes. Yeah, mm. I'm gonna do a song with Wes soon. Hell yeah, I'm coming out of retirement. That's awesome. I'm so ready for it. That'd be dope. You, uh, you, you, U.S. and, and uh, Justin need to do a song. What's or that? At least U.S. and Justin, or at least you and Justin Oakland need to do a song. You hear that, Justin? <laughs> I love that idea. Mm. Some bowling that bars. Might, that might light a fire. 
Uh, I got a couple left here. I want to definitely get to. You talked about a dude with a radio show, Ben mm-hmm. Lerner. Yeah, ben. yeah, yeah. Ben Lerner. yeah. Um, yeah, good dude. Uh, he runs this uh, show. I think it's based in like Southern Vermont um, called Clean Gems. Um, it's a radio show. I don't remember the number, like the station number off top, but it's called Clean Gems. Yeah, Ben's awesome. I thought you said maybe you were on that or you worked. Yeah, with him. no. Uh, well, I was. He he did it. We did an interview. Um, but I've, I haven't worked with him. But he is an artist. He does, he plays piano and he raps. Um, he's really good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's got stuff on all the platforms. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you ever get me the link to that interview? I did. Yeah. I must have missed it. <laughs> Shit. Well, I got. I was listening to music. That was you got me there. Fair enough. I don't listen to interviews. I just do them. No. <laughs> I do like to. I, I meant to snipe that though. I just I was exhausted after you called me last night. It's like what? Twelve hours on the phone. We gotta go. <laughs> um, the last question I got here that's really important is I was hoping that you talk about. You said, I think social media is a disease. I, uh, <laughs> I believe that was a line from a song. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. What what was the full line? Uh, social media is a disease and it's a city. Of it's oh man, I'm so bad. It's like trying to remember how the alphabet goes halfway through. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like that needs no explanation. Like, do you you agree, right? I do. I was just hoping maybe you'd fucking talk about. Yeah, it. I, I, I mean, yeah, yeah like, wrong. yeah. I mean, I grew up uh right before like uh the advent of like facebook and uh i guess i grew up in like the myspace era but was like too young to be on it um so like i i still remember um i have another bar that's like uh i can still remember uh something still i'm so bad at quoting myself still remember a time when your when your thoughts were not stuck in the palm of your hand or something like that uh uh basically I you know I grew up like before phones um thankfully didn't have a phone until I was like 15 um and yeah so I feel like I've seen both sides of like uh the world before social media and after um and just seeing how it's progressing to just I mean there's a lot of great things about it you know I I I wouldn't be able to here we are probably wouldn't be be doing the independent thing without it honestly um and just like promoting myself and networking um so don't get me wrong i'm like uh, we're living in a very fortunate time uh to be an independent artist in that way but yeah i i kind of look at it as you're either like buying or selling it's kind of like a cynical view but like you, you know you're either like scrolling um basically feeding your attention to uh to ads and other people who are like profiting off of it or bene- benefiting off of it or you're using it to promote your thing you know um but either way i feel like as a whole it's uh I mean, it does a lot of great things, you know, people can keep in touch, but it's not like people can keep in touch before that with like phones, you know, calling each other, texting each other, emails. Um, so I feel like, yeah, just the fact that it like saps people's attention so much and it's like just leads people to compare themselves with each other and um, just becomes this whole like forum for toxic, divisive conversation and uh talking shit about other people like i feel like all of those things make me feel like it's a disease Mm. Mm -hmm. i'm glad you talked about that yeah great point well stated i feel like it's nothing it's not a hot take like everyone is like yeah social media but now i'm back on it's it's some people really like i think uh, are so addicted to it though that like I don't know if that argument would fly. Like, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't know. True. Oh, hey, sh- I'm doing work actually. So don't, <laughs> he's looking at me. Yeah. This is actually the first time in my life where I've used social media. I feel like responsibly. And I'm actually, <laughs> I'm still on there a lot, but I'm actually working. I'm like, I'm networking. I've met, like you said, I think all the best connections or most of the best connections are random. And yeah, some of the most interesting people I just, I fucking made a LinkedIn account. It's like, here's some fucking weed owners in Hawaii. And it was cool. You know, it's like actually worth it. And I'm not staring at the news all day. I'm like, 
emailing people. I'm getting phone calls done. I'm fucking maybe I'm looking at a couple weed pictures, but I, yeah. I definitely like the start of Facebook. I thought was cool. You would just post the dog, and it mm-hmm. would it was cool. It would stay up there. You could post it and. You could leave your computer and come back, and it would still be there. You could actually get to the end of Facebook. There was a time yeah, where you, yeah. could, you could get to the bottom. Yeah. And then it just one day – is well, it wasn't one day. It was slowly. And these – you know, they start sliding in with the advertisements and then, mm-hmm. you know, send us your email so we can spam you and collect your information. It was just like – it's so hoard out, man. And I still – it's like I need it. I need to be able to fucking promote yeah. my shit. And, but, like, yeah – very much a kind of takes a a lot of discipline um you know like it's no coincidence that sometimes i'll go on there because i'm just like oh i need to look up this person because i just thought of them i need need to learn something about them or like i need to look this up you know they put the explore page right on the same page as the search bar so like half the time i'll like go on there to search something and have a senior moment and like click on something shiny and then like 20 minutes later i'm like what did i come here for you know it's terrible but and it, they, it also like rewards engagement, you know, like you get more, the algorithm is going to like boost you more and you're going to get more engagement if you are engaging with other people. So it's really like you got to have discipline with it. Not always my specialty. Yeah, and it's tricky because like uh, the times I've tried to be too like detached from it and too like above it like it i feel like that comes through um when when i'm posting you know it's like oh i'll post something to like give give the masses but like i'm not i'm not sticking around for like you know your peasantly conversations you know like i feel like it gives off that 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 condescending energy when when you're not willing to just like engage with it even if like the intention of it is just to be like no i just don't want to like spend my life on social media so i I don't know i found that it's kind of like necessary to to uh sadly to like kind of play into that that lifestyle a little bit if you're going to be on there promoting yourself i kind of like it though because like i'm kind of a chatty guy i don't know if you noticed but i'm kind of a social guy and it's it's hard to like it's like okay my closest friend is well Wes isn't too far away now but you know i don't have a lot of friends around here it's like i got friends here on the phone and, mm-hmm. you know, it's cool to be able to, especially like, and I haven't really talked to a lot of them. I've just been talking to weed growers and shit, which is, it's crazy the, the amount of people. I feel like one of these guys is going to be a stalker or something. I'm amazed I haven't got a stalker yet or a shithead. Super nice people. It's kind of wild. I always thought the internet was full of shitheads, but. Huh. Yeah, I feel like you won't know until it's too late with the stalker. <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably already dead. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, no, definitely. That's that's why I say it's like a, it's a really good thing in terms of like keeping people connected. I just think, uh, yeah, it, it doesn't uh, feed healthy in-person connections. Maybe it should just turn off every like other day. We get internet for a day and then nothing. And then you could yeah. like be a normal person and then you could do the social media. <laughs> a little break. I wish, I wish we could do it like that. But I feel like the world wouldn't know what to do if we couldn't like know what's going on around the other side of the world oh man when i was when i went to school went on to college like right we had dial up at home we had i was like just getting into internet i'll go to college we got these amazing internet connections you could download movies in a couple of minutes every time the fucking internet would go out you could see like all the fucking nerds like pop their heads out in the hallway it would just be like do i have to go outside now it's like no you don't you can stay in there forever but Outside yeah. won't kill it. It's funny because now the nerds are, you know, the the nerds, people who spend the, every day, every minute of their life on on the computer or on on tech, are the popular people, you know, who are on social media all the time. And a lot of them are making a ton of money. Oh yeah, Fucking and that's nerds. another thing too. Is like, uh, you know, can't be mad at like opening up more lanes for people to make money. Yeah, you know? no, no, I love the nerd. The nerds were always going to take over. Do your thing, nerds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> My buddy invented a travel site. He's fucking killing it. Yeah. I, yeah, I can't do that. <laughs> Rob, I'm out of shit, man. Um, first of all, I want to say thanks for coming on, dude. This is fantastic. And thanks for doing this a day after the follow-up call. I know it's a little a little uh, weird no how this comes. Yeah, yeah. All right. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, man, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. A yeah, lot. Rob Harsel, Rob Skewer, if we missed anything or if you have shameless shout outs or if you got any shows coming up or music coming out, um, now's the time to to plug it in there. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, definitely uh, geared up for a big 2023. Um, going to have a few projects coming out. Um, those dates will be announced uh, in the coming months. But for now, um, for now, uh, the next single I have, I'm going to drop a video for it next Friday, which I think is the 12th. And then is it? Yeah, something like that. And then, um, yeah, that that sounds right. And then 13th, the, it should be 13th is next Friday. Friday the 13th. OK. Yeah, Friday the 13th, uh, new music video. And then um, probably the week after that, um, that song will be on all platforms. So that's the next thing I got coming up. Beautiful. And yeah, you can find Rob. me on all the, the all the platforms, Rob Skewer, R-O-B-S-C-U-R-E. And yeah, yeah, there's an underscore on Instagram, Rob Skewer underscore. But yeah, on all the music platforms, all the social media. This has been lovely, man. Yeah, thank you, Caleb. I, I hope we can do it again sometime. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right. Take care, buddy. Peace.